Hi, I'm Max from Games of Families, and today I'm going to enter a crowded field, or rather, a crowded forest clearing, and review Root. Now, there are lots of Root reviews out there, and I'm going to try and set myself apart in two ways. Firstly, I'm going to keep this review to about five, six minutes. Secondly, I'm going to cover whether this game is a great game for families. So, in Root, you're all aiming for different objectives, but you measure your, your progress towards these objectives using a single victory track, and the first person to get to 30 points is the winner of the game. And there's also, you're also playing on the same board, and there's things you can all do. You can all move uh, any number of people uh, around, uh, and that's a single move. Um, you can also battle, you roll these dice, and you uh, the, the attacker scores the higher the higher number, the defender scores the lower number, generally speaking, and you can convert these beautiful cards into points or into other bonuses that you might have. That's great, but there the similarity between the different factions ends and you get into the asymmetry of the game, which is really at the core of this. As the Marquis de Cat, you're essentially a post-revolutionary regime who have taken over the forest and found that there's no infrastructure, you've had to impose martial law due to counter-revolutionary elements, and everyone thinks you're the bad guy now. So what you need to do is build up infrastructure and army and, uh, and an economy while fending off the other players. Playing as the Marquis de Cat is tough, it takes a lot of planning, but you are ahead at the beginning. As the Eerie, you are the old aristocracy who have been usurped by these dreadful cats. You have very powerful but temperamental warriors at your command, and you have to lay down your orders before you do them. If you do them, you can actually build up a very powerful group, and battling and fighting and building these roosts, which will score you points, and the more roosts you have, the more points you score. But if you overreach, and you can't complete all of this ambitious uh, objectives, you are deposed. That You get a right, an uprising against you, you lose points, you lose cards, you almost go back, not quite to where you started, but pretty much. have to have a new leader, and then you start again. So playing the Eerie is like driving a truck down a hill with brakes that don't really work. It's kind of exciting, but it's pretty scary at times, and you don't really feel in control. Great gaming experience. As the Woodland Alliance, you are basically the proletariat. You are the people over which these two great powers are fighting. And you're not even on the board when the game starts, but what you do have is supporters in secret. And you can play these supporters to place sympathy tokens. And once you've placed enough sympathy tokens, when the time is right, you can launch a revolution, sweep away the old regime, have an army on the board. And actually, once you're on the board, you're pretty, you're pretty difficult to, to unstick. So again, you start nowhere, but you can start to build a bit of, bit of momentum. And it feels amazing to have that start nowhere and to build that momentum and, and, and get, get the revolt going. Vive la revolution. As the vagabond, you're kind of an apolitical wanderer, like a kind of furry sylvan hand solo, wandering around the board with surprising speed, trading, but as time goes on, becoming more powerful and actually becoming a bit of a military force and eventually probably smashing some stuff up after a while. Playing as the Vagabond feels a little bit, little bit like a, a role-playing game. You're doing quests, um, you're, you're discovering things, you're uh, exploring ruins and finding what's underneath them. So it has a quite a different feel and a great feel, but particularly when you've got three other people who you can just mess with. So for me, there are three questions about Root. The first question is, is this a great strategy game? And I would say it is not. A great strategy game for me is one where there's balanced chance for all players and the person who wins is the person who executes their strategy, makes a good strategy, adapts it to whatever happens, whatever may come up in the game, either due to luck or the actions of other players, and executes it in the most kind of effective way. And you get that feeling in a great strategy game of, hmm, well played. I don't think you get that very much in Root. In Root, Quite often, as long as everyone's playing competently, then the person who wins is the person who has convinced the other players that they're not a threat for longest. And in that way, it kind of reminds me of that other wonky masterpiece, Cosmic Encounter. And I think it's a good way of thinking of it. This is kind of a cosmic encounter with trees in some ways. The second question is, though, is it a great experience? And I would say absolutely yes. If I have four players, 
this is my preferred gaming experience. Of any of the games that I have, I want to play Root 4 player. I think it is phenomenal. It becomes less of a great experience the fewer players you get. When you get down to two players, first of all, the, un the, the lack of balance becomes more problematic and also it is, just isn't as spectacular. There isn't this story driving it quite as hard. Um, so I think it, as a four-player game, it is essential. Um, but if you're not going to play it very often with four players, then it becomes a bit less essential. The third question is whether it's a great game for families and again I'm going to say yes. Now it is a complex game but because it's kind of wonky and it's not a, a game where the person with the best strategy always wins actually that is makes it easier for kids. The second thing is and this is contrary to what people have said about it it is not difficult to teach. They have absolutely moved heaven and earth to make it easy to teach. They have overview cards so you find out about your opponents. There is a whole walkthrough and special setup the first time you play. So I played this with kids who are reasonably young and they've just got it. They've got it after the walkthrough. They, they learn very well by doing and that seems to work very well. So I think for those two reasons, I think this is a great game for children and for families. It's beautiful. It's it is competitive, but it's not a game where you kind of go, aha, I've been planning this. That's not the main part of the game. So I think overall, absolutely great game for families. So I would give this a nine. I don't think it's uh, the greatest game ever made, but I think if that's what you're looking for, a great gaming experience, and if, you have, if you're thinking about it as a family game, I would absolutely recommend it. I've been Max Davey. Thank you very much for listening. I'll see you soon.